Okay. Can people hear me okay? All right. I've got uh, way too many slides, so I'm going to be moving fast. Uh, my name is Alan Noren. I'm VP of Online and Digital Initiatives at O'Reilly Media. And uh, what I'm going to be showing today is very much our story. It's, um, we are not an academic publisher. We're very much a, a publisher for practitioners. Um, so it's, it's very much our journey. It may or may not relate to you, but I think that there are some things in here that are very, very common. So uh, we started in 1978 as a small technology publisher. And uh, early on, uh, Tim O'Reilly made this statement. This was in the early 90s. And he said, if we're still a publishing company in five years, we're going to be out of business. And while I think that only a publishing company, and while I think he would have been wrong in, in some ways, he was right in many others. So we intentionally diversified at that time. And so we, we created a, a, a conference business, which Brian Irwin, sitting next to me, was uh, uh, he started the first one and was instrumental in doing that. And we have a large uh, online presence. And, and it does many things for us. And, but the biggest one is that you know, one of the things that we've all suffered with is the demise of the media. So what does your PR group do anymore when there isn't any more press or very little press? So we created our own media, and that's, that's much of what our website does. So no, uh, no publishing talk is complete without uh, a reality check. And again, this, this is our reality. Uh, our print book buying audience is aging. Uh, as one New York publisher told me last year, uh, they said that, you know, we are all chasing, and this was a, a general trade publisher, we are all chasing the 55-year-old the female demographic, and someday they're all going to die. Um, <laughs> Amazon, in Amazon's wake, we all know that the retail um, landscape has been decimated, and Google has taught the world that everything should be available for free. Uh, these are, this is a um, result of a survey that we did recently of our print book buying audience. So this is an older audience. And you can see that you, you may not be able to read that, but the important uh, bit is the, the bar graph over on the left where we asked, how do you, where do you go when you have a, a technical question? And of course, everybody is online as opposed to turning around and um, opening up the book that you may have on your bookshelf. So this was something that this really struck me. You may have seen this, Mary Meeker, the, the um, uh, uh, what is she? She's a, she's a brilliant lady that does these really incredible slide presentations on, on the internet every year. So this one, uh, this came out last week. This is a survey of learning professionals. Now, I don't know what learning professionals actually comprises, but probably a lot of people who we all sell to. And the question was, um, what are the top learning tools? Now, who would have thought that you know, a couple years ago that Twitter and YouTube would be the top learning tool? And what does that say about you know, our businesses and the relevancy of what we're offering? Um, this is the work and reading and learning environment for, for the average, you know, the typical O'Reilly customer. And uh, this is actually an O'Reilly customer. I took a picture of their workspace. And maybe you can see where the books are, the print books. The print books are under the monitor stand. Now, this, per now this person is also buying electronic stuff from us. So we we've still got them. But that is yet, you know, again, another indication. And this slide I put in because the only thing that matters to our audience is in the upper right of the browser where there's the search box. That's the only thing that matters. And when, when I'm in conversations with people at O'Reilly about a new product, about a new thing that we're doing, that's the only thing that matters because that's how they're going to find it or, or access it or interact with it. I threw in this slide because this is, again, our reality. This is a programming class in um, Estonia. And Estonia is, along with teaching uh, languages to, to kids when they're six years old, they're starting to teach programming languages. And these guys don't even have books underneath their monitor stands, you know, nor do they have a piece of paper. Uh, this is a, a Clay Shirky quote. Um, a basic charge for making information available isn't a business anymore. Again, it's a, it's a way for us to think about what we're doing. 
Um, so I'm going to talk about the things that O'Reilly has done. Uh, two things that didn't work out for us and then a number of them that did. So a couple years ago, th this is something that I started. It was a, 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 we thought it was a brilliant idea, Safari U. It was a remix engine. And I, I bring this one up because uh, remixing content is, it was one of the things that is um, listed in, in the uh, description for this session. So it was a remixing engine where educators and trainers could go into a, a large library of content and create their own products. Um, it didn't work out for us, and I would be happy to answer questions about that during the Q&A. Uh, we've also done a lot of different things, like selling by the chapter. Um, I had to, the, the images on the right to the screen are, are broken because the, the image is so old, we no longer maintaining it. But um, that didn't work out for us either. So I wanted to talk next about some things that, that have. Uh, one was Safari Books Online. Uh, we started Safari in 2000. It was a joint venture between O'Reilly and Pearson. And at the time, it was one of those really unbelievable revolutionary things of two former competitors coming together to create something new. And Safari is a, a thriving business that now includes 25, over 25,000 books and videos uh, for content from over 70 publishers. Um, what they're selling is immediate online access through all your devices 24 hours a day. So they're not selling a book, a single book. They're selling the convenience of a, um, a definitive library. Uh, we sell ebooks direct off of O'Reilly.com, and this has been a tremendous business for us. So we sell direct. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We sell DRM-free, absolutely DRM-free, which is still fairly controversial, multiple formats, lifetime access, free updates to, to all the books in it because, you know, errata changes and things like that. What we're selling here is immediacy of access. In the old days when we sold books, it was, you know, you discovered, you purchased, and you waited. And the way that our audience works is, you know, they're using that Google toolbar to, to, to you know, because they have an immediate question that they need to solve. So if they have to wait, they're not going to wait for the print book to arrive. So what the e-books did was it allowed customers to have immediate access to the products. And um, when, when we first started our e-book program, we were, um, we were a, a U.S. publisher. That's, that's, that was our audience. But 60% but of our traffic, our web traffic, was from outside the United States. But we had nothing to offer those people. As soon as we opened up our ebook market, we instantly became an international player, and 50% of our business year over year is from outside the United States. Oh, and uh, uh, our, as I said, our ebook business is growing tremendously. Uh, a couple months ago, we had a big online promotion. Um, over 50,000 books uh, sold within 24 hours, and we had another promotion. Um, a d it was a DR. It was in celebration of Day Against DRM. <laughs> Uh, and over 40,000 books sold that day. But with our ebooks, we're still largely, you know, just uh, digitizing print. And while there's use in that, um, it's, it's, you know, we need to move beyond it. So we are just uh, releasing what we're calling Atlas. And it's an online uh, uh, publishing, authoring, and, and reading uh, platform. And we're opening this up to other publishers if they want to use it. So if anybody is interested, I'd be happy to connect them with the right people. But what it does is it allows uh, the authors to hit publish. It publishes immediately to multiple formats. It bypasses the traditional production process, which even with our streamlined processes could still take months sometimes at O'Reilly because of backlog. So immediately publishes out. It makes the, the, the files available for the print book. And it allows authors to um, include multimedia objects. So they can there, there's a, a coding environment. They can embed videos and interactive objects. It also publishes out to the web. Uh, we also offer video training. So you know we know that, that uh, people have different learning modalities. Video training is, is allows people to follow along in, in the video format. It also does interesting things with the content creators, because to, to write a book still, it takes about a year of somebody's time. 
And uh, I don't know if, how many of you interact with authors, but most of them are pretty fatigued by the time that book uh, writing process is over. The video process is very, very different. We fly people in or we film them on uh, location, sometimes at our conferences. They're in and out within a day or two, and then we've got that product up for sale within a week. Um, our conferences, which again, we have uh, Brian to thank for this, uh, this part of our business. Um, it is, a, is another large and growing part of our, um, of our landscape. And um, we, we've branched out into to more and more verticals here. We've also done franchises. So this is Strata, our big data event. It's, a, it's about big data and data science. And um, we're taking it on location. So used to be just in Santa Clara. Now it's in New York, London, and Boston. We're also creating franchises. So we, the Boston event is, it's called Strata RX. And Strata RX is about um, uh, the confluence of, of data and healthcare. And we're looking at others from manufacturing, uh, government, and more. And because of that, the, the, the audiences that we're able to bring together at our events, uh, we're creating a, a bigger and bigger ecosystem for sponsors. So rather than a sponsor just, and th these are sponsors from the last Strata event, so you can see it's a, it's a lot of companies that are coming into this. So rather than just you know, sponsoring their name on the lanyard or trying to sell them a bigger booth, we're selling them year-round engagement in everything that we're doing in that space. So the releases of the books, we've had sponsors who will uh, sponsor a book, and uh, with some of those, we're making more money in a couple months than we would with you know, trying to slog it and sell it to individuals one at a time. Uh, they sponsor newsletters that we've created. We've got a, a very large and vibrant webcast program. They're sponsoring webcasts. So we're creating more and more products for them to be able to take part in. And it's, it's for us, we're still doing the same thing. We're still doing that vital step of editing and curation that publishers are really, really good at, but we're getting paid for it in different ways. I talked a little bit earlier about our ebook platform, O'Reilly.com is, is the vehicle through which we do that from. Um, it's, it's vitally, vitally important for us. Uh, because of O'Reilly.com and all that we've built there, we've got hundreds of thousands of direct customers who we can interact with. And we're able to innovate and experiment in ways that we wouldn't be able to if we were waiting for the retail or traditional channels to, um, to, to get up to speed. So, for example, when we started our ebook platform, uh, Amazon was not selling ebooks. You know, Barnes and Noble was not selling ebooks. So we were able to create a new business for ourselves and at the same time bring, um, bring the industry along. And it's become successful enough that we have other publishers who want to sell their content through O'Reilly.com. And some of them are quite large. So again, you know, what we used to be, you know, competitors who, you'd, you know, who would barely talk to us, you know, we've now got Microsoft Press, Wiley, Elsevier, so big publishers along with uh, a lot of smaller ones. So just some, some last words, and these are things that I think of in my day-to-day -day at O'Reilly, and I, I think that they can resonate with, with some of you. You know, stop defending indefensible business models. You know, we spend so much time defending, you know, the used book market or whatever it may be, and, um, and those energies are not put into the things that, that we need to be experimenting with. Uh, attention, and by attention, I mean attention is a new currency. Those hundreds of thousands of people that we've got their email addresses and who are buying from us, that, you know, you can build a business around attention. You can't if you, if you don't have it. Uh, relevance, you know, the, the, you know the, so many brands are losing relevance because the things they create are losing relevance. So we all need to think about products that are going to make a difference for the audiences that, that we serve. And then disintermediate ourselves from within. And that's something that you know, I try to keep in mind in my, again, my day-to-day -day at O'Reilly because you can bet that there are a bunch of people out there who are doing it, doing it to you, many of them unintentionally. 
And then the last thing I want to leave you with is um, think like a beginner. And uh, this is a quote from Shinryu Suzuki, he's a, a Zen master. In the, beginner, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. So thinking like a, thinking like a beginner can be a very helpful thing. So thank you.